she really, really goes hard to the offensive boards. Well, West Virginia has won three of their last four games. As the number seven seed, they have the first possession of the ball game. Yeah, you see TCU coming out in a little matchup zone, and she'll run a lot of defenses, but really likes to start with this matchup. Martinez at the free throw line kicks out to Hemingway, but she travels on the Mountaineers' first possession. Coach Carey, the head coach, in his 21st season at West Virginia, winning as coach in West Virginia women's basketball history. Michelle Berry missing the shot attempt for TCU on their first possession. West Virginia, a team with a lot of success in the Big 12, and Mike Carey, 10 and 7 since joining the Big 12 in the Big 12 championship. And another turnover, so some sloppy play for both teams to get things started. Well, it is, and they'll settle down. It's just it's starting the game, and, and you, you see TCU, they change up, they're changing up their defense, trying to keep West Virginia guessing on what they and slowing down their offense Madison Smith who over the last seven games averaging 14 points and four assists and a foul away from the ball. The starting lineups, Hemingway, Quinterly, we talked about a lot her in the last several games. She took the place of KK Deans in the starting lineup after her injury. Martinez, Nye Black. Round out the starting five. And and West Virginia's just a little out of sync right now. They're out of sync on their offensive end, defensive end. They didn't match up. They just got to settle down and, and let the game come to them. And DK with the first basket of the game. Nine Black surrounded by Horn Frogs. No whistle. She barrels her way to the basket and a blocking foul called on TCU. But let's take a look back at the jumper by Adike. Well, West Virginia is known for their solid defense, but they got to get matched up and, and uh, Asmary does not have anyone, not no communication, which gives up an easy two. So the foul called on Barry sends Nye Black to the free throw line. Nye Black makes the first. Nye Black averages just under eight points and four rebounds per game. She's a 73% free throw shooter. And she gets to the line the most for West Virginia, so you're probably gonna see her a couple of times more at the free throw line. Heard blocked by Nyblack. Smith has that one knocked away. Everybody playing at a little too high a tempo right now. Oh, just a little. It happened so quick, I didn't even hear the whistle. But but Smith, boy, does she have jets? She went down. She should have taken it to the basket, but but turned and turned it over. And uh, yeah, the adrenaline is flowing right now for both teams. DK over to Barry. Barry has it partially blocked by Nye Black, but Kari commits the foul. That's a it's a cardinal sin for the coaches will tell you do not foul the jump shooter. Reagan Peebley in her eighth season at TCU. She was a part of the first Big 12 
tournament championship team when she played at Colorado, right here in Municipal Auditorium, was part of that first championship team. Love it. She could play now. She coached against her. I, I did coach. I played. Yes, I did. And, and uh, Coach Silberry was the, the head coach, and they were tough. She brings that toughness to her team. One free throw connected on by Barry. And the three-point shot goes down for Madison Smith. And, and that's what West Virginia is going to have to do. They're going to have to make outside shots, and, and uh, that was a great look for Smith. Knocked out of bounds by Savannah Samuel, who's in the game for West Virginia. And so good ball movement. They, they throw it. They, they leave her open. Solid look. And on the inbounds play, a travel called on Lauren Hurd. We're all tied up here in the early going of the first quarter. The winner of this game advances to play Iowa State, the number two seed in the quarterfinals. And I love TCU's really, really active in their zone. They just need to be productive. And, and where do you go in the zone? You just go right there at the high. You try to get it in the paint. Just what Nye Black, they got it to her. Just got to finish that. With great hands on the defense. Yeah, Michelle Berry knocking that one out of bounds. Nice. Beautiful move by Martinez. Just set up by a down screen. And you, a lot of people think you can't, you can screen it in a zone. And that was a solid screen in the zone to free, free up more uh, uh, Asmery. And an illegal screen called on Martinez. We had a, a legal screen on the other end that set up the shot. Well, it did. There's the screen. You screen down and, and just freed Martinez up a little bit, and then she turns around and sets a little, gets a little push off. So that's the second foul on Martinez. Here early, we haven't even had a, a first media timeout, and Martinez already has to go to the bench. Yeah, that's not good. Don't, I love Nye Black. Just, she just battles. She's just a warrior. She's going to go to the boards, and she's going to rip that ball down, and it's, it, it's going to take a lot of effort to get the ball out of her hands. She plays with 100% energy. <laughs> she does. Skying for the rebound, Michelle Berry. Heard season opening, too strong though, but she is fouled. Yeah, and good attack. She gets the rebound, dribbles the length of the floor, and that's hard to do because you've got to stop. The ball is the primary. You're, you're, that's what you need to stop, and, and uh, they did not stop the ball, West Virginia. Heard a 72% free throw shooter. She averages about 15 points a game to lead the way. She was selected all Big 12 first team in each her sophomore and junior years. Honorable mention this year. You can see her numbers over the last three games for TCU. The first time or when these two teams met this year, West Virginia won both games. Quinterly is blocked. They played first on January 25th, and West Virginia won that one by 12, and then they played again, actually earlier, excuse me, are on February 2nd, and that time West Virginia won by 7th, and now they're getting a little rhythm here in the early going. They are, and I... And I for TCU, I like what they're doing, but they cannot. They've had two turnovers in a row, and they just can't. They can't play great defense and not capitalize offensively. 
Bray throws it away, dives on the floor, and somehow West Virginia comes away with it. Edgefor can't drop that one. And her her looks a little shaken up right now. And TCU is going to spread the floor, just giving, make, allowing open lanes, open cuts, and that's the third turnover in a row. And you just can't. You, you, you've got to control. You got to. If, if you're going to play fast, you got to make sure you can deliver the pass. And this has been up and down, Brendan. And both teams look a little winded right now. Yeah, they sure do. Well, it will be TCU basketball when we come back. But both teams struggling to score a little bit in the half court. But West Virginia creating some offense with their defense. A lose. West Virginia at 500 overall. They've won three of their last four games. They did win a title in 2017. Went to the NCAA tournament last year. This was a team, West Virginia, that in, back when they won the title in 2017, they were the sixth seed. And they beat the three seed and the two seed and the one seed that year to win the title. So they've made a run before. They know how to come to this tournament and put it together. Well, don't ever count out Mike Carey in West Virginia. They they bring their defense every game, and, and you see it the example right there. And like every team, they, they've struggled. They've had to deal with injuries. They've had to deal with COVID. Um, but... They love coming into this tournament, and they bring it. And so don't count West Virginia out. Ari Gray puts it on the floor, has it partially blocked, has it blocked again. Two and one, one series. Kayla Makwa with a couple of blocks on one play. And a foul away from the basketball on J.J. Quinterly. Yeah, I, I, I love J.J. Quinterly. She's she's was is on the all the the Big 12 uh, all freshman team, and I just love her energy. She every time I see her, she gets better and better, and, and uh, she makes big plays. She's a tough kid. But she sends Jackson to the line because TCU already in the bonus. West Virginia already at that five team foul limit. Jackson makes the first, misses the second, but is able to get the ball off the tip from Barry and then turns it over herself. Germain for TCU commits the blocking foul. Bodies flying. Bodies flying everywhere. So yeah, Jack, she gets her own rebound and they throw it out and, and you gotta get set. Just gotta get set and it's, Good opportunity to draw a charge because she beats it. Smith steps into a jumper, high arcing jumper for Madison Smith. That brought some snowflakes down. We don't need any more. <laughs> we don't need any more. Been nice weather here in Kansas City. It was up almost 80 degrees last week, and then we have snow today. Crazy. And it's supposed to clear off, so anybody that's still traveling to Kansas City, it is going to stop snowing and will clear off the next couple of days. But Quinterly looked like she pulled something as she went to the basket. Yeah, she did. One great, th one great thing, Brenda, the game's inside. So you see Quinterly, <laughs> you know, attacking and just gets, looks like she just gets bumped a little bit and, and gets too far under the basket and... and but I think she's, again, she's a tough kid. Yeah, she's, she's not coming out. Well, look, at she she tied her shoe. She gave herself a couple extra minutes to catch her breath. And she's That's right. That's exactly right. She grabbed her leg and tied her shoe. <laughs> <laughs> German pushing ahead. TCU down by five here in the first quarter. So you see TCU spreads the floor. They're running a Princeton-style offense, and they go through the high post quite a bit, and your high post player has got to be a great passer and handle the ball. Samuel from three, short. And 
Makwa with the rebound. This is a wicked pace right now, up and down and back and forth. The kick out. Lauren Hurd almost had the rebound, but blessing Ejiofor there. And what a nifty move all the way to the basket on the left side for J.J. Quinterly. Love it, Jack. Kind of juked inside and went to, to her left hand. It was really, really solid. Here she is in the open court. She's dangerous. Gives a little fake inside and comes in and scores a bucket going to the line. That's her first basket of the game. As a starter, and she replaced KK Deans, the leading scorer this year for West Virginia, who went out with an injury against Baylor. And it seemed like a whistle from the crowd sounded like a whistle from a referee and caused Quinterly to stop her motion. But as a starter, Quinterly's averaging about 12 points a game for West Virginia. Well, she is take as a player, you're on the bench, you take, you take, uh, you get your opportunity. She took advantage of that opportunity with Dean's down, and she's done a great job and really, really blossomed as a player, but she's got an opportunity to play a lot, Brenda, and a lot of kids, they're comfortable. They, they, the more they play, the more comfortable they get, and I think that's the case with Quinterly. Edge of four, bouncing that one in. TCU 0 for their last six. Need a positive play here to end the quarter. They're going to kick back for a three here. Four on the shot clock and stolen away, and what a play by Quinterly. Love it. And TC. So just all ball, and, and it's not only she blocked the shot, she throws it off the, def the, the offensive player. Yeah, what a heads up play for a freshman. 5.9 seconds remaining. Madison Smith lets it roll all the way to the front court so she has a little extra time. Hemingway lines up for a three and splashes it down. A 9-0 run for West Virginia as they come out blazing here in the first quarter. If you could hear it there or not, but we were told that it was a whistle coming from possibly the band, <laughs> the TCU band. At the it's court. not a marching band. You don't need that whistle. So you don't need the whistle. So I think they are getting that taken care of, so that doesn't happen again and disrupt the free throw shooter. Hey, they're just they're just having fun. <laughs> it's great to have the bands here. It I mean, is. year after year at the Big 12 Championship, we've got some of the best bands in the country. Yeah. There's some. Really good music being played before the game at, at timeouts. And they're having a lot of fun. Yes, they are. <laughs> so West Virginia is shooting 41% in that first quarter. They were 7 of 17, but TCU 1 for 10. Great look. Great. Nine Black set up a, a, a back screen. Uh, for the three-point shot and just didn't go, but Samuel had a good look at it. And Lauren Hurd fouled by Kari Nyblak, but Lauren Hurd sort of, it looked like she put up her elbow because she was protecting herself running into Nyblak, so the, I think Nyblak did cause the foul, and uh, it just must have hit her in a, 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 you know, in her chest that just didn't feel very good. All right, so our officials tonight, Mai Forsberg, Lisa Jones, and Brian Hall, another great crew here tonight, making sure they went to the monitor to check that out. And we appreciate them coming over and explaining it to us as well. Uh, West Virginia's defense has just gotten them so far out away from the basket, which caused them to get a 30-second violation. Anna 
Malu Unya with the attempted shot before the shot clock violation, but it's just, it's been tough sledding for TCU to try to find any kind of offense. Edge of four kicks it out to Hemingway, splashes home a three. Yeah, that's two in a row for Hemingway. Just playing inside out, getting the ball inside and kicking it out to an open three-point shooter. Manumala Unya misses from the corner. Edge of four with an offensive board. West Virginia commanding the game right now. Lauren Hurd takes it into the paint and she'll be rewarded with a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, and so West Virginia, what they want to do is this is a ball screen. They want the ball out of their best shooter's hands and so they're going to double and they're going to force her to pass the ball and not be able to get in scoring situations. Lauren Hurd is the all-time leading scorer in TCU history. She came back for her fifth season this year after just an outstanding career. Not putting up quite the numbers that she has the last couple of years, but still averaging about 15 points per game. And we, we talked to... to Reagan a lot about her her squad at, with, with TCU and they really got hit hard with with COVID they were out they had to totally shut down for 21 days this year and so it really affected their their flow obviously they're they're uh, being in shape but when you go off you know you you worry about teams when they're off for four days for Christmas right and then you think about 21 days yeah you know, what a tough, tough thing for Reagan Peebley and her squad to go through. And, you know, it's just been tough. Ever since this TCU squad two years ago, Reagan Peebley had gotten them into position to play in the NCAA tournament. That graphic says the last time they were in the tournament was 2010. That is so unfortunate because they would have been in in 2020 had right. the NCAA tournament not gotten canceled. And I, I think it was just such a blow to this program that had worked so hard to get there and then to deal with COVID on and off. And like you said, the missing 21 days this year it has really been so tough for them to deal with. And I, I understand everybody's dealt with COVID. I understand that, but not everyone has had their whole program shut down for 21 days. And that is tough. The coaches couldn't even be on campus. The kids couldn't go home for Christmas. They were the first team to have the Omicron variant. And it was way early before anybody even knew anything about it. So, yeah, they, they wouldn't allow them on campus. It's, it's, it's just a tough situation. And uh, I, I think they've played better down the stretch. And, and not only just physically, but learning how to play with each other. Uh, and that takes time. And that takes a season. And that's, that's what your season gets you ready for for postseason. Hemingway picks up the foul to send Tabby Diggs to the free throw line. She didn't score against West Virginia either time when they played this year. But boy, she had a great Big 12 tournament last year. She had 20 points in their win over Kansas. She had 22 against Baylor, but she misses both free throws there. Yeah, tough. You, you got you to gotta lay up some free throws. You, you got to make layups and free throws. If you want a chance to, to move on and to, to uh, put yourself in a position to win a basketball game. So Coco Adike fouls and will go to the, the bench with two fouls for TCU. Hemingway, who's hit a couple of three-pointers, is fouled in the paint. Yeah, and, and that's a foul. You got to let her go because I'm not sure that she was going to score the basketball. 
Um, TCU wanted to walk, but they didn't call it. But you, you've got to let that shot go. So you're just belling that shooter out. Aaliyah Jackson committed the foul. Tomorrow will be quarterfinal Friday here in Kansas City. Oklahoma and Kansas will get it started in the first one at 12 o'clock Eastern. Then Baylor will play Oklahoma State, who defeated Texas Tech earlier today. Iowa State will take on the winner of this game at 6 Eastern. And then the nightcap will be Texas and Kansas State. Boy, Texas coming into the Big 12 championship eight wins in a row. They are on fire right now. Yeah, they're a hot team right now. And they, they started with their defense, Brendan. You can guarantee they're going to bring it. Offensive foul called on Tavi Diggs. And who's in the middle of it? J.J. Quinterly. Just slow. TCU's just trying to play too fast, but God, great. That's just getting position and sacrificing your body. Edge of four, too strong. I love Edge of four's effort. She wants the basketball, calling for the basketball, and, and she's going to keep working if she gets touches. The minute the post don't get a lot of touches, they're going to stop working. Diggs kicks it out. Nice. In transition quickly the other way, and Hemingway now has nine points for West Virginia, and TCU has to call a timeout. But Quinnery, she was just a white blur. Missed the Big 12 tournament, but she returned for the NCAA tournament. We'll learn more about her at halftime. A great feature coming up at halftime that we'll have for you. Yeah, she's a tough kid. Look at the ball pressure. It's just, it's just causing havoc for TCU. Nothing is comfortable, and that is because the pressure, the ball pressure that West Virginia is causing. And Winterly with an easy basket on the other end off the turnover. Already 13 turnovers for TCU, and West Virginia has 14 points off those 13 turnovers. I, you capitalize. If you're going to work hard on the defensive end, you got to capitalize on it, and West Virginia is capitalizing on their hard work on that end. Warren Hurd with the long rebound. One on one against Hemingway, she tries to step through, and Tabby Diggs there to clean it up. First basket by Tabby Diggs against West Virginia this season. Didn't score either time when these two played in the regular season. All right, getting the ball inside, and uh, that solid defense right there by TCU. Let's see if they can capitalize on this. Another miss, everything being challenged in the paint. It's a track meet. You better put your head on a swivel because it is going up and down the court. And TCU just not able to score their two of 16 and now 14 turnovers. And Mike Carey calls the timeout to get a point across here, but his points in the game against Iowa State. That shows you how good this West Virginia defense is today. Well, they're they're just they're causing TCU to play to play play fast, um, struggle to make it. There's not an easy pass. There has not been an easy pass on this end. And then you see that any time that Hurd uses the screen, they're going to trap her. They want the ball out of her hands. Germain can't track it down on the missed shot off the rim. Yeah, Coach Carey just called the timeout to make a point. And that's for 
the next cool, the next uh, um, uh, quarter, just to make sure his team knows. You know what? You, we don't. We're not looking at the scoreboard. We're playing to try to be perfect. That one gets away. And a good thought. Just overthrew her. Aqua, nice dive into the paint. That's when, when you need a bucket, you go inside. High percentage shot, make the easy pass. Aqua just, just caught it, turned, scored. Muscling her way inside, Ari Gray. I believe that's Gray's first basket of the game. Another miss from Manamala Unia from three-point range and quickly to the other end, Ari Gray and the Mountaineers. God, what a tough, she, that was tough. Caught it in traffic and laid it up, made it look easy, wow. Michelle Berry, no, and the three-pointers just not going in. 0 for 8 from beyond the arc is TCU. And Quinterly is fouled. So, yeah, so what do you do? Move the ball around. Look at the high-low. When the ball goes in the middle of the, co the the floor, there's no help. And so she had position, just lob it up, made it look easy. That's the stuff they need to they lay their hat on right now because the three ball isn't going. West Virginia, fast break points 12 to nothing on TCU right now. They've just been using their defense to get out and go. 16 points off turnovers West Virginia has. And we talked to Coach Peebly about it, and she said turnovers have really hurt them. And it's hurt them right now, and it's and it's it's handling the ball, and it's turnovers that are live turnovers, which which mean they lead to easy buckets. And, and she, they've been they've had that all season, and they just haven't corrected. They got to get that under control. A foul away from the ball. This time is called on Yummy Morris on the illegal screen. A lot of bodies flying. A lot of bodies on the floor today. Just watch the collision on this last play. So we're on the right. Just move, just. Yeah, so if you're gonna set a screen, it's up to you to get your feet set. And you, the offense runs off of you. And that's, they're gonna call that every time. Because it's a moving screen. <laughs> and that one just gets away from Quinn early that time. She went in through the Giants at down there that time. <laughs> Under a minute to play in the second quarter. West Virginia up big in this 7-10 matchup in the first round. Two years in a row in the Big 12, the number 10 seed has won a game. TCU's trying to make that three consecutive, but it's going to be an uphill climb for them. Well, you got to get the ball to Barry right there. She's wide open. She's posting hard. You, you got to get her the ball. You find a way to get her to the ball. Smith changing gears. Morris with the rebound or with the block. And Quinterly knocks it out of bounds. So TCU will have a chance here with 13.7 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Barry from the top of the key and another miss. 0 for 9 now, TCU from three point range. And it just 
haven't gotten good, haven't got clean looks, and uh, every shot has been contested except the one that they threw inside from the middle. Madison Smith can't score that one, but she had seven points in the first half, and we've got a great feature coming up at halftime about Madison Feature. The Mountaineers up big at the half with our partners Chucky Kemp and Andrea Lloyd as we take a look at the tickets that have already been punched. Kentucky with that big run through the SEC. Caitlin Clark and Iowa won the Big Ten. Stanford won the Pac-12. Just exciting. Just you, you saw a lot of last-second shots that put people in the tournament. And just so that's what to, that's what the uh, the tournament is all about. It is madness. And we get to say madness this year. Yes, we do. Martinez, who went out early with two fouls for West Virginia. Gets on the board to give the first basket of the half to the Mountaineers. And so Martinez only played three minutes, three and a half minutes. Yeah, she picked up those two fouls quickly. And how about that? Martinez scores and then Nyblack scores on back-to-back -back possessions to start things out. Yeah, and those two have been on the bench sitting because of foul trouble and, and the, the, the guards and everyone else has really stepped it up. There we go. And a nice pass inside to Adike. Uh, and that, that, again, Brenda, that's a high percentage shot. You gotta go that and give your team some confidence. It was a great call by Reagan there. Smith bounces that one in. You gotta pick up, the, you gotta pick up your defense on the other end. You just can't let uh, West Virginia score layups and they've had two layups right there. Or three layups. The defense by Madison Smith causes Lauren Hurd to commit the travel. My Black has it stripped away. Just showed the ball, just too loose with the basketball. Good hands by TCU. Good ball reversal to set up the three-pointer. That's the first three-pointer of the game for TCU. DK knocks it down. Yeah, that needed to go in because she just gave up a layup to her three. So that's one of those ones said, no, good shot. <laughs> Heard with the rebound for TCU. West Virginia's defense has really held Lauren Hurd in check as Aaliyah Jackson goes inside. So what do you do? You go and then you get it inside and watch this. You give up that easy bucket for a wide open three and it goes down. That's a smart play when it goes down, Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> when it goes down, that's right. So Aaliyah Jackson at the free throw line. And Barry, look, if, again, the first half, TCU didn't have, they had contested looks the whole time. That was a wide open look. So Barry, yes, wide open knocks it down. They got to get more open looks like that. Jackson misses the first free throw. A transfer from Texas A&M last year. Next on the second, the officials have to go to the uh, baseline. Brian Hall had to pick up something off the court. And play resumes. And what it was, he laid it on the table. I we don't know. <laughs> I was going to bring that over and give it to you, baby. <laughs> I thought so. If it was a, a diamond ring, a earring or something, I thought, yeah, I thought that something. Night black. Going tough to the basket. She's fouled. Again, the TCU just they just bailed nine black out. I think she's playing a little bit out of control, but hey, she's at the free throw line because she's attacking the basket. Kari Nye Black has been named all Big 12 honorable mention in each of the last three years as a sophomore, junior, and senior. Her 
freshman year, she was the Big 12 Sixth Player of the Year and just has always had that high motor. Yeah, and I like the edge about her. I just think she's just, she's got a toughness to her I love. She, you know, she look, she gets down, she's down on herself. She missed those two free throws, but, but she goes back and, and just plays solid on the defensive end. She gets banged up a little bit. <laughs> Martina has just leveled Lauren Hurd in the paint that gets back up and gets the rebound. Nye Black. Nye Black said, I, I don't, the free, I don't, free throws, I don't care about them. I want to get the, <laughs> I want to step out a little farther and hit that elbow jumper. <laughs> She's got five points now. Really balanced scoring for West Virginia. Now a blocking foul, though called on Madison Smith. Yeah, so you see Nye Black, she just, she's wanted to, yeah, she, she's saying, give me the ball. And she holds that, she holds her, her follow through. I love it. So she's not messing with free throws. She wants the real deal. She wants the two points. <laughs> She will take a trip to the West Virginia bench. Lauren Hurd is at the free throw line. She hasn't had any field goals made tonight. Now has made three free throws. Well, they've just made it tough for her, Brennan. And, and that was Coach Carey's game plan. He says, I'm not going to let her put big numbers up on our team. And so when she catches it, and if she comes near another player, we're going to trap her. And that's what they've done. And it's made it really difficult for, for her to... to get open looks and it's what has allowed this big West Virginia lead edge of four can't connect on the putback <laughs> yummy Morris from straight away and then the call the foul called on Quinterly on the rebound attempt yeah, it's a good rebound. Just got early position. When you get early position, you're going to get the rebound. Barry from the top of the key. A DK. Jackson has it blocked. Just the active hands for West Virginia's defense. Clearly a little look off all the way to the rim. Wow, rebound and run. That was that was that was special. Nine points for Quinterly. Then a foul called inside on West Virginia. You're right. JJ Quinterly is a special player. So what is great defense is she blocks it, she rebounds, she gives a little fake, shoots a wide open layup, and, and it, it just it's a lot of fun to watch. She's got high energy and, and West Virginia's defense is really it really is stifling right now. Coming back from that replay, TCU get a uh, a follow-up jumper, a tip in. But Madison Smith answers back quickly for West Virginia. Yeah, there you go. Throw it up. And Samuel just uses her length to knock it away. It was a great look, and the offense is going through the post play at the high post. You just gotta you gotta throw it up and let let that that player down low go get it. Her trying to feed Jackson diving to the rim, but just too hot to handle. Tough day for Lauren Hurd. West Virginia up big. Barry to tip that in. Absolutely. Just anticipation and and uh, and moving without the basketball, not settling to get boxed out. She just moved, and that's the hardest person to box out is a is a moving target.
Boy Smith has a quick first step. Lauren Hurd is just four points away from reaching 2,000 in her career. So as she wraps up her career at TCU, you sure hope she is able to, to reach a, that significant milestone. Absolutely. And, and, and TCU, they're not playing their, their best game, but, but I, I love watching their, their, their attitude, their encouragement with each other, and uh, that's tough to do. That's tough to do when things aren't going right. TCU basketball, you're right. And I think that's something that Reagan Peebley has really instilled over the years. They just have such a positive culture in this program. And players just care about each other and work together. And that assist from Lauren Hurd sets up the nice basket inside for Coco Adike. It just started with a back screen, and I don't think some, the defense didn't switch or, or didn't communicate and left a wide open uh, shot inside. There's the back screen, and, and Nyblak didn't, she didn't switch, she didn't help, and, and they got the easy basket. Adike, the transfer from Butler. Finishing off the three-point play. She's in double figures now with 10. Nine black and 10 on the floor. What a surprise. <laughs> I wasn't, yeah, I was going to say, I don't even have to look at the number. <laughs> that kid's all over the floor. But she was fouled. And, and West Virginia's, they've got to stay with their game plan. They've got to be careful because TCU, they, they're, they're not going to quit. They're, they're just not. They're, they're, they're still trying to grind and, and, and get it right. And so West Virginia's got to be real careful. And they're, and they're doing a great job. Just, just can't get complacent. somehow able to corral that basketball. It was knocked away, but it's five seconds on the shot clock for West Virginia. That's what TCU, protect the basket. Protect the basket. If West Virginia's gonna go that deep, block the shot. Samuel from the corner. A nice rebound for Adike. Jackson will get a chance to go to the free throw line. And then Jackson just attacking the basket. So earlier today, Oklahoma State got the victory against Texas Tech and advanced to play Baylor in our second quarterfinal game. The first one will be Oklahoma and Kansas. Those two games will be on ESPNU. Chucky Kemp and Andrea Lloyd with the call. And then the evening games, Iowa State will play the winner of this game, and Texas and Kansas State will play. Those games will be on Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Holly Warlick and I will be back with you for those evening games. We're night owls. <laughs> I guess that's what they think, right? <laughs> That's how it worked out for sure. But we'll be here all day for all the games. So Madison Smith will go to the free throw line. And that's the solid defense. TCU was playing solid defense, drives, fouls, with 10 seconds to go. You, you, know, you, you, you play hard, you gotta finish that play. So they're, they're just moving. Well, they're, they're, and you just can't leave the basketball you stand up and you just can't foul let her go let her make that play build a wall make them shoot over you Michael committed the foul and Smith connects on the second we talked about how good the West Virginia defense is 18 times this year they have forced an opponent into 20 or more turnovers. 
So you're you're not surprised at how they're playing. You just got to somehow simulate that in practice, and that's hard to do, but you, you, you've got to play against it, and you've got to learn to handle pressure and what to do when they do pressure. Samuel misses that one, yeah, so TCU with 20 points, or 20 turnovers, just another one of those teams that West Virginia has turned over this year. Ari Gray picks up the foul. Yeah, look at look at the numbers. West Virginia is second in the Big 12, 19.8 turnovers forced. Well, you, you look at they've always been known for their defense. That is solid. You don't have to guess what West Virginia is going to run. They're going to run a pressure man-to-man -man on the ball in your face, and you're going to have to prepare for it. He's not going to zone. No, it doesn't, you know, I asked him yesterday, are, are you going to press? Well, maybe if we need to. They don't need to press. They need to rely on their half-court effort, and they get it done, and it is constant pressure. And it's physical. And they like it that way. And they like a low-scoring game, and, and it's due to their pressure. Michael made one of two free throws for TCU. Quinterly along the baseline. A little too strong. Now, Quinterly and Smith have an unbelievable quick first step. And another foul call that will result in the TCU free throw. Yeah, and Ari Gray's a little frustrated right now, and I'm sure that Coach Carey's not very happy with her. And Jackson, all of her points tonight have come from the free throw line. She has five. Yes, it's, 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 Coach Carey's not happy. He's putting on a defensive clinic on the sideline. Always teaching, always coaching. A foul on the floor. And that's... The shot clock didn't stop, so. Here we go. on this end. There's a lot of officials out there. Watch them. Look at everybody's get to scrum. Watch. Everybody's pointing in different direction. <laughs> Smith rises up and splashes it down. What a night for Smith. She's got 16 points now. She makes... She makes the game look easy. Just her three-point shooting and getting people the ball and just is solid. West Virginia just using the clock. And an offensive foul call. 
Just trying to do too much. And I'd like to just try, just move the ball. You'll get a good look. Just move the ball. She's just four points shy of 2,000. Aaliyah Jackson and Michelle Berry also could be playing in their last games. There's a couple other seniors that are seniors but could come back for another year. We're in such a strange time, but we know that Lauren Hurd and Aaliyah Jackson and Michelle Berry, their clocks are running out tonight. Martinez, you know, she's been in foul trouble and hasn't played a lot this game, but you still see that explosiveness that she's capable of. Yeah. And a nice shot inside, tough Michelle score for Berry. Michelle Berry. Heard picks the pocket. Of Madison Smith, one on one, steps through, crawls nice. that one in. Great steal, great hands, quick hands. Hurt had, and then then attacks the basket. Nice finish. She's now two points away from 2,000 in her career. And sometimes when you're not scoring in the half court, you just got to go get one. It's what you do, and look at watch her quick hands. Just follows the ball with the hands and just. Punches it out and then goes and gets it. And then, hey, Smith, good defense. Her just found a way to score. And this TCU team still playing hard, still trying to grind it out and still trying to make something happen from the defensive end. Follows her miss. Her no. And the three pointer goes from Makwa. That's that's her first three pointer made of the season. Well. It all started with the offensive rebound, and they got two offensive rebounds there and got the chance to get an open shot. And I'm sorry, it was Adika, so that was not her third or first three-pointer. I want to make sure that Coco Adike gets the correct claim on that three-pointer. I don't, nobody wants to score layup right now. Getting good looks. Uh, immediately, Quinterly goes to the sideline, an injury that is going to be taken care of immediately as she. Quarterfinals, we start with Oklahoma and Kansas on ESPNU at 12 Eastern, followed by Baylor, Oklahoma State. And then on Big 12 now, ESPN Plus in the evening, Iowa State versus the winner of this game and Texas and Kansas State play at 8.30 Eastern. So a couple of first round games today. Oklahoma State won the first one after trailing by eight in the third quarter, came back and won big to advance to the quarterfinals. Lauren Hurd just two points away from 2,000 in her career. For TCU, what a, a great career she's had. A couple of all Big 12 first team recognition years in her junior and senior seasons. And 
TCU trying to take advantage of the, the height advantage and just couldn't finish. But Gray came over to help Smith and uh, took an outside shot that missed. Goes off Hemingway's leg. Mike Carey was not happy with the pass. <laughs> We just need to put a camera on Mike here. <laughs> the other one gets sloppy. No. Well, these, co it, it, these coaches, both of them, they're coaching their teams. They're, they're not looking at the scoreboard. They're just trying to get better, and they're, they're, they're coaching their teams up. And that's the way it should be. Coaches want perfection, and they're never going to get a perfect game, but they still strive to do that. Winding down, Germain comes away with it. Germain decides to back it out. You gotta give it to her right there when she's open. Her driving and she's fouled. So she will go to the free throw line to try to get to 2,000 points in her career. KK Deans was the leading scorer on the year for this West Virginia squad, she was averaging 14 and a half points a game, all Big 12 honorable mention last season. And she's been out since the Baylor game. It's just, just a tough, you know, when you have your injuries like that, it's, it's tough. Lauren Hurd. Lauren Hurd now with 2,000 points in her career. So she crossed the milestone with the free throw to cap, cap off her illustrious career. That's all. Awesome. Congratulations. Her. And if she's the leading scorer, men and women. Is that that's correct? And at TCU, for sure. Good job, Good job. And a foul called. That's a lot of shots, Brenda. You sure. put up a lot of shots. Well, and, and I don't know, you and I talked about this. I'm not sure how all of this gets recorded in the record books because Lauren Hurd is in her fifth season. She chose that COVID season. All the players that played through last year get a chance for an extra year. So, you know, there's, she has scored those points in, in five seasons, but Lauren Hurd had a tremendous career in four seasons. Absolutely. And, and an all Big 12 first teamer a couple of years, and she just has been a huge contributor to this program throughout. And, and you know what? Good for her. And if she's not ready to, to move on and uh, get the opportunity to play it, play another year because that the, the COVID year was disrupted. And that's what she did. That's what she did this year was to play that extra year. And, it was disruptive. Yeah, and, and I, I, I would encourage kids to do that as well. Kind of feel for, you definitely feel for those seniors that had their 2020 season cut short because they didn't get that opportunity. Yeah, it's, COVID has been disruptive in so many ways, but in, in we identify it with sports because we're involved in sports. Right. So, you know, kids didn't go to their graduation and things like that. So it's affected so many things. TCU will be at the free throw line when we return. She makes passing look easy. She makes scoring look easy. She gets her feet set for an open three. Doesn't hesitate. Takes a wide open shot. And just her whole game is really is really had been very good today. Madison Smith is our Phillips 66 Big 12 player of the game with that performance. But TCU on a 10 to nothing run right now to draw this within 14, now 13. There's still a lot of time left. Still a lot of time left. In this quarter, TCU has slowed down. They've slowed their offense down. They've slowed their thought process down. and. And they've gotten back into this basketball game. Now called on Lauren Hurd and both Adike and Lauren Hurd immediately go try to 
help uh, Matt, or, excuse me, Martinez off the floor as she fell into the uh, press row over here. Yeah, the great trap right here. Just You just can't make contact with the, the, with the body, but that was a solid trap. It's four fouls on Lauren Hurd. Martinez spun and had a wide open look at it. Not sure why she passed that up. And Quinterly, who is back on the court after seemingly, we don't want to <laughs> diagnose her situation, but it looks like she dislocated her finger and she's all taped back up and she's out there. We'll just say a finger injury. A we finger don't know injury. exactly she's what it was. got tape on it, but it has not affected her right now. Wow. Where's that being? That's that's a beautiful shot. She hadn't needed to. Right. She has not needed to, to score because Smith and Quinterly have really picked up the pace for Martinez. So TCU had gotten the game back within 13 and five quick points for West Virginia, but the answer by Adike. Adike having a, a nice night for TCU with 17 points now. Yeah, TCU's got to come out and just put some pressure on her. Virginia's, uh, West Virginia's just going to stay out and and run a little bit of the clock off. Quinterly, hard foul. Wow. She's, <laughs> she just, She's going to get in the ice bath tonight and put the hand in there and her elbow. And earlier it was her, either her ankle or her leg. <laughs> that kid's had a tough night. Quinterly grew up in Norfolk, Virginia and was the 4A player of the year. Earlier this year in games against TCU, she scored 13 points the first time against them, 16 points in the second meeting, and she's got 13 tonight. She likes playing against the Horn Frogs. She's very, been very productive all, all three games. There's that trap on her. German from the corner. I tell you, TCU's gotten has gotten better looks this first this, these two quarters. It just haven't gone in, but they've gotten really solid looks. All knocked out of bounds by TCU after the miss inside by Edgefor. 227 remaining. The winner will go on to play Iowa State. In the quarterfinals tomorrow, Iowa State earned the second seed in this tournament. And it's interesting, Brenda, TCU has outscored West Virginia in these last two quarters, so they've settled down. I haven't found an answer for Madison Smith, who's got 19. Yeah. Well, that's a different story right there. In the double team on her, they have just made her last game here for TCU awfully tough. Samuel with the basket in transition. You would think that, nice move. You would think that West Virginia would let up a little bit on their press pressure, but you know, it's in their DNA. Lauren Hurd scored on the layup with quick substitutions in. Let's take a look at the bracket again. Oklahoma State won earlier today, advanced to play Baylor, Oklahoma, and Kansas on the other side of the bracket up top. The winner of this game will play Iowa State. And then that side of the bracket is Kansas and Kansas State, excuse me, and Texas. Be an interesting matchup. Aoka Lee, the 6'6 center, all Big 12 first team for Kansas State going against Texas and their tough defense. Yeah, the K State's just going to have to really understand how to handle the basketball. And uh, it's tough to 
throw it into a, your big girl when there's ball pressure all over you and, and that's what the, the, Texas is like West Virginia you know what you're going to get you just got to prepare for it you know what you're going to get JJ Quinterly at the line another interesting matchup tomorrow will be that Kansas Oklahoma game they split during the regular season but Kansas just won down in Norman this past weekend so a quick turnaround and those two will play each other right away again yeah that's tough <laughs> That's tough. It's it's uh, video for Oklahoma. It's still painfully on their mind. So, um, and in in Kansas is probably they're still feeling good about themselves. So it'll be interesting tomorrow. Third short on the jumper. TCU climbed back in this, got to within 13 points, but it's been West Virginia's ball game for most of the game. Yeah, but West Virginia came out of the gates just just blazing on the defensive end and just set the tone um, for for them and, and TCU struggled and then once they came out at halftime they settled down and uh, and really got some better looks and and uh, again TCU is going to learn from it they're going to they're, they're going to the to next year with. Um, Understanding what they need to do and what they need to get better at and uh, Reagan Peavy, she's an outstanding coach and she'll figure it out. She'll get them where they need to be You know she grew up around basketball her father Ray Scott was a coach of the WBL, which was the first professional women's basketball league. You know a little bit about that. You actually played in the I, WBL. I did. We won the championship. We won the Nebraska Wranglers. We won the world championship back then. The world championship. World championship is what it was called. <laughs> we beat the Dallas... Uh, Diamonds. That's that's what it wasn't diamonds, was it? It was Oh, I thought so. But Ray Scott did coach that Dallas team. Yes, and we beat we beat her dad and Nancy Lieberman was on that team. That's right. So I had to throw in that, just get a dig on Lieberman. <laughs> <laughs> well, some great history and, and I talked to Reagan uh, with her dad last night. They and Reagan talked about how she grew up watching those professional women's yeah. basketball players. She's been around basketball all of her life. Yeah, she, she's out. She's excellent. And again, she's this wasn't her year. She didn't want it to be this way, but it is. And, and uh, again, a coach is always going to learn from it. Lauren Hurd with the steal, and she will cap off her career at TCU with that driving layup. But TCU coming up short. It was all about West Virginia tonight. A send off to the TCU seniors of Jackson, Adi uh, Hurd and Barry, but Mike Carey's squad with the victory, and they will advance to play Iowa State tomorrow.